Hello and welcome to Deakin University's virtual open day. I'm Lynn Riddell and I'm the Associate Dean for Teaching and Learning in the Faculty of Health and I am delighted to have you here today as we go through a session discussing some of the degrees we have on offer here in health and their career outcomes. This session is designed to help you understand some of the career outcomes from our degrees and to help you um, in your decision making about what degree you'd like to study. So it's going to be a relatively quick overview of a range of different degrees on offer. I do encourage you to take some time to either attend the course specific session that's available to you either here virtually on um, our website or attending the sessions as they're presented live. And each of the slides that I present, there's going to be information at the bottom about the time of the live presentations. I do encourage you to take your time to have a look through those resources to enhance the information that I'm providing with you here today. So first of all, how do we know what our students end up doing with their degrees from uh, Faculty of Health at Deakin University? We have three main pathways of information. First of all, we stay in great contact with our alumni, our graduates, and they let us know what they've been up to over the duration of their careers. We also work closely with our industry partners. All of our courses have an industry advisory board, and they oftentimes are graduates of our programs, but they certainly also employ graduates of our programs. So that's another source of information that we draw on. And the third and final piece of information that we draw on to understand where our students end up is that we ask you, once you finish your degree uh, across Australia, the Australian government sends out a survey and asks you what you've been doing and where you're working. So we use that information to inform both the design of our courses and informing you about the career outcomes that are possible uh, through completing our degrees. So before I go any further, I would like to pause and acknowledge country. As we gather today, we are physically dispersed and we're meeting in a virtual, con uh, virtual construct. However, I'd still like us to take a moment and reflect on the meaning of place. And as we do this, I'd like to recognize the various traditional lands on which we're doing our business today. I'm coming to you from the lands of the Wurundjeri people and the Kulin Nations. I'd like to acknowledge elders past, present and emerging of all of the lands in which we work and live and pay my respects to their ancestral spirits. Well, welcome to this conversation around careers and health. Before I go too far into talking about the degrees that we have on offer and the career outcomes from those, I just want to run through a couple of terms that you're going to be hearing across this presentation. So we use two terms relatively interchangeably in health. We, te we tend to talk about the health workforce and the allied health workforce. There's not a clear differentiation between those two, but generally when we're talking about the health workforce, we're talking about our medical professionals and our nursing and midwifery um, teams. When we're talking about the allied health workforce, we tend to speak a little bit more broadly and we talk around talking about teams such as occupational therapists, uh, clinical exercise physiologists, dietitians, social work, and they tend to be working both within clinical settings as well as community and governmental type settings. We're fortunate in health in that we are a career in demand. We're not as impacted by robotics or artificial intelligence as some of the other disciplines may be. So it's projected that we're going to see a significant growth in jobs in healthcare and social assistance in the next few years. Healthcare and social assistance are the leading providers of new jobs within Australia, and there's projected to be about a 14% increase in uh, requirements for graduates over the next five years. So when thinking about careers in health or the types of degrees that you like to study, it's really important to focus in on what motivates you, what your values are, and what you would like to spend time doing. The more you're studying in an area that's of interest to you, the more likely you are to succeed. So typically in health, we see people that are very motivated to help people, either help people individually or help community groups to improve their health and well-being. In our exercise and sports science field, we tend to have people who are very interested in being active or performance-based. All of our degrees really um, help develop up complex problem-solving capabilities. So you really need to nut through, really need to like nutting through complex problems and thinking of new solutions. You need to be able to uh, be comfortable using data to inform that complex problem solving. And of course, all of our degrees make a difference. Some of them work more locally, if you think about performance of an athlete, and some of them work more globally, if you think about public health challenges around the world. And we have degrees that offer you opportunities in all of these. So the first degree I'd like to talk to you about today is optometry. I'd just like to point out that this is a relatively quick um, overview of a range of degrees that we have on offer 
here at Deakin. And I'd like to invite you to either attend the open session for each of these degree offerings, and I'll, I'll put up a notification of when they are at the bottom of the slides, or work through some of the resources that are here on our virtual open day website to learn a little bit more about more and more detail about these degrees. So the first one I would like to mention is optometry. Optometry is offered down on our Geelong campus and it's a combination of a bachelor program as well as a master program. Now, optometry is a fantastic career in terms of good employment outcome. The employability rates of optometrists are high. It's very flexible. Um, career path with opportunities to work both in uh, private practice or within large organizations. Now, in terms of day-to-day -day tasks, many of you may already be familiar with some of the tasks of optometrists, but obviously they're involved in um, activities such as performing eye examinations and working to improve um, vision in uh, people who experience dif uh, difficulty with, with vision. So you can have prescription of lenses and contact lenses and glasses. There's also a very large um, global requirement around improvements in health. So there's opportunities to work around the world and in um, hard, uh, underserved populations as well to improve vision. Now, if any of you engage in, in lenses such as, um, uh, as I do, you'll also know that the technology around lenses, both as glasses or uh, contact lenses, is advancing rapidly. So there's an opportunity to work in the research field and in the technology field around improving vision. And I'd just like to highlight that you can see down the bottom of the slide that there's the uh, opportunity for the um, uh, session more specifically around optometry. Nursing and midwifery, we offer nursing and midwifery degrees on um, the Warrnambool campus, the Geelong campus and our Burwood campus. Now the outcomes from a nursing degree may well be familiar with you, um, familiar for you I should say. Obviously, nurses work in clinical settings within hospital settings within GP clinics. You have an opportunity to specialise within um, postgraduate studies in nursing, where you can go into elements such as medical nursing care, paediatric care, perioperative care. There's also an opportunity to work outside of a clinical setting and with a nursing degree. We have school nurses, mental health nurses, community health nurses, we have nurse researchers that work within large research organizations as well. There's um, a lot of important national and local level work around nurse policy and um, development of the nurse workforce. So there are a range of degrees, that, a range of career outcomes that you can have with the, with the nursing degree that can be both clinical and community-based as well. Nutrition and Dietetics. Now, Nutrition and Dietetics is offered on our Burwood campus, and we have the major in nutrition offered on our Geelong campuses, along with a combined degree with um, exercise and sports science. Now, the difference between nutrition and dietetics is that nutrition, which is our bachelor's program, is really designed around working in healthy populations and general populations to improve the health and well-being of community groups. Dietetics is our clinical postgraduate training. So if you want to work in clinical settings, such as in a hospital setting or with people with specific disease needs, then you do need that postgraduate dietetic training. And our undergraduate nutrition program is a pathway into that postgraduate training. So what can you do with an undergraduate degree in nutrition? Now, our nutrition degree that we offer here at Deakin University has a strong theme of food innovation in it. So a number of our graduates do go on and work in the food industry, and that can be in terms of a food scientist or food product developer, developer, or it can be in terms of nutritional support for those products that are um, available for consumers. People also work as a food and nutrition policy officer, and this can be at both the local um, uh, local government level, the state government level, and the federal government level as well. And this helps people make positive evidence-based changes to their health through both research and the application of that research into policy development. So some examples of day-to-day -day tasks are around um, food and nutrition research to support policy development, developing health policies and campaigns within government organizations, and using data to evaluate the effectiveness of food policies. Psychology, we offer psychology on all of our campuses, including the Cloud Campus. So that's Cloud, Burwood, Geelong, and Warrnambool. We offer psychology in partnership with a range of degrees at Deakin. 
you can uh, undertake a Bachelor of Psychological Science on its own, or you can combine it with nursing, for example, um, uh, Bachelor of Arts, and some of our degree offerings with our colleagues in um, business and law as well. So there's a great deal of diversity of what you can study with a psychology degree. And as a result, there's a great deal of diversity of the jobs that you can undertake after you complete your Bachelor of Psychology or a degree including psychology. So there are outcomes such as uh, a work life counsellor, child protection officer, community support worker, drug and alcohol counsellor. A large number of our graduates go into human resource management and obviously they are organisations that can vary significantly in size and scope. Manager of community programs, a lot of people go into consumer insights, marketing research as well. Now, if you're interested in clinical psychology, that's postgraduate training, which occurs after you complete an undergraduate degree. So that clinical training really requires that postgraduate level of qualification. Medicine is our postgraduate offering here at Deakin University. So to be eligible to apply for a medical degree here, you need to have completed a bachelor's degree. You don't have to have completed a bachelor's degree in health sciences, biomedical sciences or science. Deakin University's medicine degree is open to applicants from any undergraduate degree pathway. We do this deliberately because we need to keep that breadth of the nature of people that go into our medical profession. Our communities are better served when there's a great uh, diversity of skills in our medical profession. So our medical degree at Deakin University is very focused on supporting our rural, regional and remote communities. So we have offerings of um, placements that take place in our Warrnambool region, partners across Victoria and indeed across um, the rest of Australia. So we really focus in on community health and rural and regional uh, medical needs. We obviously engage in extensive clinical experience across the undergraduate degrees. Now, there's a very clear career path with medicine and um, working clinically in a hospital or GP setting or in local community health settings. But there are also a, a great deal more scope to the um, career outcomes of, with um, a degree in medicine as well. A number of graduates go on and work in the research field, biomedical research. A number of people go and work in um, uh, biotech type uh, companies, pharmaceutical companies in their research space as well. So even if you're studying a very vocationally based degree, such as medicine or nursing or um, social work, for example, which I'll talk about in a minute, it doesn't restrict what you can do with that degree once you've completed. In all of our degrees here at Deakin, we work very hard to establish a range of transferable skills. So those critical thinking skills, those problem solving skills uh, can be applied to a wide range of diverse career outcomes. So you are never limited with what you can do once you've completed university level education. So I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about health sciences. Health sciences is probably one of our most broad degrees that we offer here in the Faculty of Health at Deakin University. Health sciences is offered at Warrnambool, Geelong, Burwood and our cloud campus as well. Within Deakin University's health sciences degree, it, um, you have a core um, um, core discipline of study, uh, first year, second year and third year, but along with that core discipline of study, you add on majors in areas that are of particular interest to you. So the types of majors that we have available here for you in Deakin University to go along with your health science degrees include nutrition, include exercise, include um, Family studies, disability and inclusion support, environmental health, psychology, just to name a few. So we have a wide variety of majors that you can put together to complement that core study in health sciences to direct what career path you would like to take. So as I mentioned, you need to take two majors, but you can also take a third or you can pick up other um, elements of study that may interest you from across the university. So because of the types of majors that we have on offer, the career outcomes from a health sciences degree is very broad and it's going to depend a great deal on what you've studied. Some of our most common um, career pathways from the health sciences degree is a community engagement officer, a disability support planner, people working in family, community, refugee and indigenous projects across both uh, non-government and government-based organizations, 
environmental and sustainability officers working again largely in local um, government or non-government organizations. You can also go on in terms of food policy, nutrition policy, exercise, sports science, for example, international aid worker, health and nutrition promotion coordinator. Now, um, the health sciences degree also sets you up very well for postgraduate study. So this, this is the type of the degree that is a great choice. If you're not quite certain what area of health you really want to get into, this provides you a great foundation for postgraduate study. So some of our students go on and they do postgraduate dietetics, for example, speech therapy, public health, uh, child uh, or play therapy that we offer here at Deakin. So it's a very broad brush, brush degree. So I just want to uh, spotlight on uh, one particular career outcome that can um, be available to you after the completion of the Bachelor of Health Sciences, and that's an environmental health officer. Environmental health officer would have needed to have taken a major in environmental health to complement their core studies in health sciences. So an environmental health officer works to ensure compliance with environmental regulations to support the health and well-being of our community. And this can range from anything from swimming pools, gymnasiums, through to food service outlets, restaurants and cafes, to ensure that the premises are promoting health and not putting um, the well-being of our community members in danger. So some of the examples of day-to-day -day tasks include investigating potential hazards and, and working with organisations to improve um, their ha uh, hazard reduction within their organisation. Supporting on change, reporting on changes to legisla legislation that may affect uh, recommendations and maintaining databases of health and safety reports. Okay, so the next degree I'd like to mention uh, to you this morning is the Medical Imaging Program and our Medical Imaging degree is offered through our Geelong campus. Now, medical imaging, similar to optometry, is actually uh, quite heavily mathematics-based and physics-based. So within a medical imaging degree, you really need to have been interested in mathematics and physics through your previous training and come uh, ready to uh, um, engage in complex problem solving to assist the medical uh, diagnosis of disease or tracking improvements in health. So uh, a graduate from medical imaging degree will be eligible to work as a skilled practitioner across a broad range of diagnostic medical imaging, including general radiography and CT scans, just to name a few. Now, the field of medical imaging is um, advancing rapidly. As uh, technologies and robotics and um, artificial intelligence um, advances significantly, there's a, a significant involvement from our graduates in improving that technology and improving that application into the clinical setting. So a number of our graduates work in hospital or community settings um, in medical imaging, and some of them also work in the large um, companies that create the, the equipment that enables us to advance our medical imaging profession. Now, the next degree I'd like to talk to you about is our social work degree. We offer social work both on our Geelong campuses and on our cloud campus, and we also offer it as a bachelor's program and a master's program. Okay, so what do social workers do? A social work degree offers you a broad based career that can lead you to work with state, local or federal governments. You can work in community organisations, you can work in clinical settings. You can work with children one day, you can work with adults the next. You can be working across um, drug and alcohol counselling, you can be working as advocates for people with differing levels of ability, you could be working in school situations, you could be working in refugee, migrant populations, indigenous populations. Social workers provide support and advocate for people experiencing difficult situations such as mental illness, family violence, drug and alcohol. Um, examples of some of the tasks a social worker may undertake would be counselling or mediation both for individuals or groups. They can provide advice on legal, financial, health or accommodation services. This might be in an acute situation or a more chronic ongoing situation. Social workers can be involved in advocacy where they advocate on behalf of clients to improve programs and services. They can work at a policy level and they can work at an individual level. If you're an empathetic person who wants to make a difference to other people's lives, then a social work degree really could be the career for you. Exercise and Sports Science. Our Exercise and Sports Science undergraduate program 
is offered on our Geelong campus and our Burwood campus. And like a number of our degrees, you can also take this degree in combination with other ones. So we have a combined degree in exercise and sports science and nutrition that's available to you. We have a combined degree in exercise and sports science and our business and law colleagues as well. So again, just to highlight to you, you can see running along the bottom here is the information about the exercise and sports science course information session, which is going to go into a lot more detail around the career outcomes from those degrees. And of course, you can uh, hear that information or uh, access that information again on Deakin University's virtual open day website. So what can you do with a career in exercise and sports science? Within our exercise and sports science degree, you do have the opportunity to take majors of studies as well. So those majors of studies that you take in combination with that core exercise physiology degree will determine to some extent the types of careers that are available to you. So graduates from a um, bachelor's degree in exercise sports science are trained to apply exercise and sports science skills to the performance, health and participation of individuals, athletes and teams through training, coaching and advice. And the types of careers that are available to you um, can include working as an exercise scientist, a sports coach, a sports development officer, complementing your study with um, study in nutrition. You can work as a strength and conditioning coach. And a number of our graduates work in event management and sports um, development in communities. A uh, bachelor's degree in public health and health promotion is offered both at Geelong and the Burwood campus. And it's very closely aligned to our Bachelor of Health Sciences. So some of the career outcomes are very similar to what you could achieve with a Bachelor of Health Sciences, particularly if you're studying the public health and health promotion majors. So the career opportunities from the Bachelor's in Public Health and Health Promotion are really around both the government and the private sector. And you can work both across Australia and then internationally. And some of the roles involve a community development coordinator, a health policy officer, a health promotion officer. A lot of our graduates continue on into honours and then through into research, so they become a health researcher. Um, we do have graduates that work in pro, um, program development, both at local and state government level, as well as working within community organisations. Uh, graduates also work in social planning and women's health uh, work within both um, non-governmental, governmental and community health organisations. So just a little bit of a spotlight on what a health promotion officer may be involved in. A health promotion officer provides health information and education, supporting communities to promote healthy behaviours and prevent disease. So some of the day-to-day -day tasks that you might be involved in as a health promotion officer, including inspecting hotels and community buildings to make suggestions on ways to improve the health and well-being of people accessing or working within those buildings. Investigating public health safety concerns, again, with the um, thought to solve those health safety concerns to improve um, outcomes for the community, working with councils and hospitals on um, health promotion type uh, campaigns. Occupational therapy, our occupational therapy degree is offered on our Geelong campus. And um, our occupational therapy degree really draws on individuals who are empathetic and who really want to make a difference for the lives and the ability, the ability of all of our community members to engage in active and meaningful lives. So occupational therapists use a whole of person perspective to work with individuals, groups and communities to achieve optimal health and well-being through participation in occupations of life. So our occupational therapists work in a broad range of different um, uh, uh, community and um, clinical settings. So you may have come across occupational therapists in hospitals and outpatient services. They also work a lot within our community settings, in schools, government departments, business and private practice. If you think about organisations such as the NDIS, um, Work Cover, Work Safe, Transport Accident Commission, you can um, uh, quite easily imagine the role of occupational therapists in those settings to improve the health and well-being of people who may be recovering from significant um, uh, trauma or people who may be uh, exist, uh, living with uh, differing degrees of ability. 
Also, our occupational therapists engage in research and uh, education to try and improve our systems and processes in our communities to support um, active engagement with all of our community members. So let's have a look at the day in the life of an occupational therapist. This particular example is around somebody working in aged care. And this could be aged care within a um, supported care environment, or it could be supporting people living independently within uh, in their later decades of life. So an aged care occupational therapist would work with the elderly to improve and maintain fitness, flexibility, and capacity to keep active and enjoy life. Some of the day-to-day -day tasks would involve conducting physical assessments on clients, running personalised rehabilitation and fitness programs, uh, running programs that implement falls preventions. Now that could be physical, uh, physical therapy, or it could be um, hazard uh, reduction in a home or a workplace setting. So if you're a person that's patient and has a, a, an approachable, ha happy, cheery disposition, enjoys staying fit and, keeps inter and enjoys interacting with elderly uh, adults, then a career as an aged care occupational therapist is something you really should consider and it may well be the career for you. So that's a very quick overview of a range of career outcomes from our undergraduate degrees that we offer here at Deakin University. I do encourage you to go to the open sessions um, that have been highlighted throughout this presentation and to also spend time and look at the information that is present up on our virtual website. Um, I can't reiterate enough, however, that what you study now does not define or limit what you can uh, work and uh, engage in in later parts of your degrees, or later parts of your career, I should say. Each degree at Deakin is designed to provide you with transferable skills that help you engage in meaningful and satisfying rewarding careers outside of what you may have originally studied. It's not uncommon for somebody to come into our degree and get towards the end of one of their degrees and say, you know, I really love X, but I just can't see myself working in that field. I really would like to do something different with those skills. And we have um, our wonderful Deakin talent here at Deakin University that helps you navigate your way around that and learn how the skills that you're using can be transferred into a range of different career outcomes. Even if you're studying something very vocationally based, as I've mentioned before, like medicine, occupational therapy or nursing, you're not defined by what you study and you can take that and work um, across a number of different careers. I would also like to encourage you to look quite broadly at all of the other elements that Deakin has to offer you in terms of enhancing your career opportunities, as well as developing up your discipline specific knowledge in your degree. We offer a range of volunteer opportunities. We offer a range of study abroad opportunities, work integrated learning or placement opportunities that very um, nicely complement your academic studies and makes you that well-rounded graduate that's going to be um, very competitive in uh, the job market. So I wish you well with your decision making. Please don't worry about it um, overly much. You cannot go wrong. If you choose to undertake a degree at Deakin University, you cannot make a mistake. Anything you learn and study is going to advance your um, career planning. Once you come into a degree, you do have the opportunity to transfer through uh, to different degrees. If you um, take, maybe you take a couple of electives and think, I really love that subject area. I really wish I'd chosen to study that area. You do have the ability to transfer once you arrive in at Deakin. So um, good luck with your decision-making. Uh, you can't make a mistake. And I look forward to seeing you come and join us here at Deakin University. Welcome to our live Q&A session on how to choose your degree in health. Some people will still continue to join us for the next minute or so, so um, hopefully you can all hear all of us well enough and that you're ready to come with the questions for us. My name is Lynn Riddell and I'm the Associate Dean for Teaching and Learning in the Faculty of Health and I'm joining you here this morning from the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations and I would like to pay my respects to the traditional custodians and their ancestors for all of the unceded lands that Deakin University has its campuses on. I'm going to introduce our panelists to you now. I'm going to introduce them by name and then give each of them a minute or two to talk about uh, what they do here in the faculty and what they're studying for our student representatives. So first of all, I'd like to introduce you all to Xu Fen Lin. Good morning, everyone. I'm the Work Integrated Learning Manager working in Faculty of Health. Thank you, Xu Fen. Jamie. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Danny Mustard. I'm the Deputy Pro Vice Chancellor Graduate Employment, um, part of Deacon Talent. Deacon Talent is your um, career service, and we work, work very closely in the with the faculty. Thank you, Jamie. Ava. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ava. Um, I'm a second year psychology student here at the university, and I study on the Warrnambool campus. Great. Thanks, Ava. And Michaela. Hi everyone, I'm Michaela. I'm a fourth year occupational therapy student currently on my final placement. Great, and thank you very much in particular, Ava and Michaela, for taking your time to join us here this morning. It's really helpful. Um, so for those of you that are here for our Q&A, thanks very much for your interest in a, in a degree in health and obviously a career in health. If you would like to ask a question, please type your question in the Q&A section in the question panel on this page, and we'll do our best for to respond to all of your questions during the session. There's likely to be more than we can manage in our 30 minute session, but if you have any unanswered questions at the end, our team will continue to work with you on the web chat and they'll be there all day and they'll be able to assist with any questions. And we also will have specific international student um, advisors there too to help for admission relation, relation, related questions or any fee questions. So please click on the web chat icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen after the session to be connected with our team. So we've got a few questions that have already started coming in. So I'm going to lead off with um, the first question for our panel. The first question is, can you please explain work integrated learning opportunities in our health degrees? So perhaps you feel I could start with you, please. Sure, that's a great question. Um, so at Deakin, work integrated learning opportunities including placements at with a host organizations for courses such as, you know, nursing medicine that has some um, clinical placements as a course accreditation requirements. And for courses that um, have electives, you know, don't have the compulsory requirements, but have elective, we also can match students with an um, host organization. Normally they are like a health related organization. There is also the opportunity for students to undertake an international um, internship in Fiji or Indonesia, or they can do an internship at the uh, Deacon Freelancing Hub. So I might pass over to um, Jamie to talk a, a bit more about the Deacon Freelancing Hub. Yeah, look, just, just very briefly, the Freelancing Hub is an opportunity for, for all Faculty of Health students, and in fact, all students around the university, um, to work with non-for-profits um, as part of their internship. So to give you an idea, uh, in trimester two, which is about to start in a few weeks, um, we've got projects with Beyond Blue, Barwon Children, Youth and Family, Guitars for Veterans, Victoria Place, Netball Victoria. Um, and you work with, as I said, uh, uh, other health students, but also students from science, business, and the creative arts. I think I'll, I might talk more about it late, later, Shufan, but back to you, Lynn. Thank you. Um, so maybe I could ask um, Michaela what opportunities she's had in her occupational therapy degree to get some work integrated learning activities into her training. Yeah, thanks, Lynn. One of the best parts about the Deakin course that I have found is that you get to partake well, I can speak to my course, Occupational Therapy, but you get to go out on placement from your first year, first trimester. So right from the start, you're getting that taste test to see if it's something you're interested in and you're getting a really diverse um, range of experiences. I've been fortunate enough to be able to travel to Sydney to attend placement. I've been in local hospitals, local mental health centres, but then I know some of my peers have also um, done their placements in um, prisons, um, in schools, and yeah, just all, so many different opportunities. And it, it really does broaden your horizons and give you that experience to see if it's something you are interested in. I suppose another plus to that is your first year in any health course is quite broad, um, doing a lot of anatomy and human structure and function and understanding the healthcare system, which um, I found has been very beneficial for people who have wanted to transfer between. Great, thank you, Michaela. Now, Ava, you're in a different style of degree, a psychology degree, which is a bit more open than the occupational therapy one, which is very heavily prescribed. So are you aware of work integrated learning opportunities in your degree? I am aware of work integrated learning opportunities within my Bachelor of Psychological Science. Um, so there are a number of opportunities, but we get to them a little bit later in the degree. We want to make sure that everybody has the best build up um, of theoretical knowledge to be able to apply in those work integrated learning situations. Um, 
but we do have quite a lot of practical placement within our fourth years and postgraduate um, study options later on quite a lot um, up to nearly a year of, of full-time sort of work integrated learning. Great thank you Ava. So of course work integrated learning is an incredibly important um, opportunity to get yourself prepared for a career in health but not everybody has an opportunity to undertake a placement. Some of our courses, we require it, such as um, Michaela's Occupational Therapy, and of course, programs like optometry and nursing and exercise and sports science have required placements. In other areas, they are um, what we call elective, so they're voluntary. And some people have life situations that mean they're not able to undertake them. So we're aware of that as a university and we work very hard across all of our degrees to make sure people get to experience um, preparing themselves for their degrees. And I might hand over now to Jamie who leads a team across the university who come and work with our degree, um, our curriculum and make sure that we help people plan for their careers. So I wonder Jamie, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Thanks, Lynn. And I think this is quite unique to Deakin. So the, the Deakin Talent Team, um, which, which is the career service. So we work very closely with your lecturers, particularly, uh, well, in fact, across all year levels. And the idea, uh, the overriding idea is for every student to realise that your professional career doesn't start when you graduate. Uh, it actually starts day one of your degree. And um, so we work with your lecturers and the types of things we do include career planning and thinking. And it was really good to hear Michaela talking about the broad experiences that you get in, in health degrees and those different settings. You've got lots of different opportunities in most of the health degrees. So it takes a bit of thinking. It's not as a matter of you come in and you know exactly what you're going to do when you graduate. And that, that takes a little bit of work. So um, our team works with your lecturers and, and you'll cover some of that content um, both within the curriculum and then you can do extracurricular activities um, to, to further that. Um, we also, uh, as part of the content, help with job applications, whether that's your casual job, you might be looking for an entry level role or a pre-graduate job. And, and then once you get to where Michaela is in your final year and looking for your graduate role, um, we can help you with your resumes, with your cover letters, with addressing key selection criteria, with the interviews and things like that. So it's been great for, for my team to be able to work with, with Lynn's team in the health faculty across a number of the courses. Great. Thank you, Jamie. Now, we've got a couple of questions uh, coming through around sort of best paths. So best paths going into psychology. Um, should I take a combined degree in exercise and sports science and biomedicine? Um, so I'm going to sort of combine them into one a little bit. And yes, absolutely, a combined Combined degrees are great. Taking a two degrees at one time is going to put you under a, a bit of stress, but of course you can do that by uh, taking you know, part-time options for both of those degrees. You'll just be here a little bit longer. Um, but I might sort of talk, uh, hand over to Ava a little bit and uh, talk about sort of uh, pathways in psychology, knowing, of course, that we do have a dedicated session on psychology coming up later in the day. And the really specific questions are better placed there. But maybe, Ava, what kind of um, assistance have your lecturers given you understanding your pathways in psychology? That's a really fantastic question. Thank you very much to those who have asked it. Um, there are a number of pathways in being able to get get through to um, you know that final career point that people would like to so whether that's um, a career in psychology a career in social work and help and further from there there's quite a lot of options I'm undertaking a subject at the moment called coaching and counseling for behavior change where there has been a really fantastic unit chair who has been able to sit down with nearly each of us um, and be able to talk about career pathways career options what she took um, and sort of what we, she wished she knew as well going into her now quite extensive academic career. Great, thank you, Ava. One thing that I just thought about it as you were talking about that too, um, it's very it's very difficult when you're starting out your de degree to um, imagine what you might be working in when you graduate your degree or even 10 years after you've graduated your degree. So we're really aware of this when we plan our degrees. Uh, my, my original background is nutrition. Uh, a lot of people come in and they want to be a dietitian and then you know they go through the first year and a half and think you know what I really love this other element. I, I didn't even know all of these other opportunities exist. 
So we really help with that as well. We try not just to put you in, 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 a, in a solo pathway. We really try and help you see the breadth of where your skills can take you and how you can transfer those to a whole range of, of um, different degrees. I think psychology is a perfect example of that, Ava. I mean, it's such a rich degree that so many employers want in so many different ways. Um, not just being a, a, a sort of behavioural clinical psychologist. I'd absolutely agree with you there. Just um, showing the breadth of what our psychology degrees actually offer. We have psychology within Bachelor of Arts, straight Bachelor of Psychological Science, but we also have Bachelor of Marketing with a major in psychology. Mm -hmm. Just really goes to show the breadth um, that psychology as a career pathway can contain. Thank you. And of course, uh, Michaela, in occupational therapy, the, the, the career pathways are changing almost weekly at the moment with the expansion of the NDIS and uh, what was really a very hospital and community focused roles now is much more becoming private practice focused and a and whole range of different um, industries that we never foresaw, foresaw about five or six years ago. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's one of the best parts about our course. While it's really structured, it does open it up for a lot of different opportunities. Just um, in my last, one of my last units, we were whizzing around the uni on wheelchairs and um, getting to know what would be best suited for our clients. And then we've also gone into a lot of mental health side, which often you think a psychologist would be best suited to, but um, occupational therapy is going full steam ahead in that field, particularly after COVID. Yeah, great. Actually, that's a really good lead in there, McKenna. I might pick up on that just a little bit. There's not a specific question on it, but I will be quick here. So you've heard from, from McKenna about the breadth of experiences and work integrated learning that they've had across the occupational therapy program. And this is quite typical of a lot of our health degrees. And obviously, we've had two years where we've been in quite significant lockdowns. And our teams have worked really hard. And I don't know if Shufin wants to add in anything here. We've been fortunate that a lot of our health work integrated learning placements have been protected because the governments recognise that we must have graduates or we're going to be in a whole heap of difficulty. So even during those lockdowns, those allied health professions were able to maintain their placements. It was difficult for some when there were um, you know, border closures and things, but the team worked really hard to support those. So Makata, I don't know if you have any comment on the degree of support provided. Deacon handled the, uh, the transition online extremely well. Um, we already have a Deakin Cloud campus which enables students across this, the state or across the country or across the world to um, engage in different units and different courses. Um, so the transition for learning was really good um, and I know that the ability to continue placement was also really good. There's a lot of different supports out there to make sure that students are thriving um, while they're on placement. I myself are currently on a nine week placement and the support there has been flawless. Obviously COVID is still impacting placements left, right and centre, but mm. Deakin is really doing all they can to make sure we graduate with our required amount of hours and on time. Um, so we're not set back any further. That's great, Michaela. thank you. Shifin, is there anything else you'd like to add there about maybe the nature of the placements for our, our, our non-clinical degrees? Yes, absolutely. Um, so during the uh, I'd sort of follow on what you said, Lynn, in terms of the during the COVID, and um, we had a lot of innovation and a lot of our students actually um, did their placement online. And we also had the um, the international internship, both, you know, in Fiji or in um, Indonesia, they may move the online as well. And in terms of the um, placement opportunities for students for the um, non clinical courses such as health sciences. So we have um, host organizations there like community organizations such as Latrobe Valley Health and students will be able to you know, undertake projects for them. And sometimes they might be designing a um, survey to find out what the impact of a um, public health um, project on the community, or they might be um, writing a proposal of a new community health project. So those are some of the examples of um, placement opportunities for students. Great, thank you. Now we have a question here about, can I start a health science degree um, as a pathway into nursing midwifery double degree? If so, at what stage could I transfer over? So course transfers is a really viable option for the majority of our courses. So it's very, very common that a person will begin maybe their first trimester, maybe even their first three, two, four trimesters and then think, you know what, I really wish I'd started studying 
degree X. And we can, um, we do have a process where you can apply for and get accepted into a course transfer. Some of our degrees, however, are really popular uh, and capped. We can't take too many more people into them because we have um, clinical placements that we can only fit X number of people into, for example. And our nursing degrees are one of those uh, fall into that category. So the number of course transfers that we take into our nursing programs is quite small each year, no more than 10. Um, and that's because we usually get a, enough of our students um, right from the beginning. And I think that that's also very common for degrees such as optometry and medical imaging. If you're going into more general degrees that don't have the clinical hours that are required, then a course transfer is much more likely. But programs such as nursing, occupational therapy, optometry, medical imaging, we can't add too many more students to it. So um, you, you theoretically can apply for a course transfer, but in some of our degrees, it's still highly competitive to get into. In some of those situations, you're probably better off um, to complete your degree uh, and, and then and try for a postgraduate pathway where they're available. Okay, so we've got some questions here about favourite units and facilities. So Michaela or Ava, I don't know if you'd like to speak about what you particularly liked about the facilities here at Deakin, be they the great quality cloud teaching or the you know, physical campus that we've got, or maybe even talk about what, what you've enjoyed most about your degree so far. Yeah, I can jump in on that. Um, occupational therapy is based at the waterfront campus, which I, I know I'm a bit biased, but I would argue is probably one of the prettiest Deakin campuses. Based in Geelong, um, most of the campus, or from all of the campus, you can look out across the Cryo Bay. Um, and so that adds a really nice motivation to go into the campus to study. Um, other than that, one of my favourite parts particularly of my course, is the connections and the opportunity to develop those friendships and relationships. Um, we've been fortunate enough to be mostly on campus. We did obviously have to go online um, for a, a, quite a bit of the course, but the connections and friendships that have been made has made the course smooth and much more enjoyable. Great, thank you. Either. I would have to say that I possibly might be on the prettiest campus. Sorry, Michaela. <laughs> I study at the Warnerville campus um, and studying at that campus has really been able to allow me to take a, a blended opportunity model. Um, so I take uh, subjects through the cloud campus, but I also take um, a number of subjects in person here at the campus with some really wonderful tutors. Um, but I'd have to say talking about my degree I've come across personally for me a couple of favorite subjects just because of the impact that they've had so I had a first year unit called health behavior um, which is actually quite a large unit um, for most health science degrees and things like that um, that was really enjoyable because it taught me real life real world skills for things that I'll need built be needing to be doing um, but also a unit that I'm taking at the moment um, that was called coaching and counselling for behaviour change but is now counselling skills introductory I'll be taking the second subject later um, has just been really being able to build on those skills um, mm. to be able to so that I can work in the career pathway that I'd really want to psychology. Mm. Great. I'm pleased you mentioned the size of some of our uh, first year units because some of them are really big. And Michaela, you mentioned earlier uh, learning about anatomy and physiology, and that's really big as well, um, in close to 2,000 students in it. So that's actually a nice uh, opportunity for people to meet each other as well and meet people from different degrees and learn about what other people are learning. So it's just a nice way to get to know a whole variety of students as well. Absolutely, and it provided the opportunity to see another campus. I know um, with the two campuses in Geelong, Warm Ponds has greater lecture facilities and greater capacity for classes. So most of my, I'd like to be general and say most of my first year was actually based at Warm Ponds. I know that can be quite a shock to the people that enrol in occupational therapy, but it's just because they um, blend, you, blend a lot of your classes with a lot of other courses. So in my first year, I was doing anatomy with nurses, with exercise physiologists, with biomed students, with 
health science students and it, it really gave you an insight to other courses as you discussed oh this is what I'm studying oh you're not doing that as well um but it, it gave a really hands-on approach as well mm. and I think that then made it a lot easier I can't speak from my experience but a few of my peers have then transferred in and out of courses and I think it is thanks to that um broad approach you still do have some quite specific learnings that um, we did based over at our original campus but yeah it was really good to be you know with a diverse group of people and learn from each other right thank you and I think you know that's critically important of course because you know the complex problems our world's facing at the moment needs people to work together and Jamie I wonder if you want to speak about how that underpins the the culture of your freelancing hub you know we get people from across many different disciplines working to solve a, a particular problem Sure, but before I do that, I work on the prettiest campus, which is the Warren Ponds <laughs> campus. So, um, and Lynn's on the Burwood campus, and I'm sure she thinks it's the best campus. Um, I'm not sure. I think my money might be tipping towards Warrnambool, although yeah. look, you can't go past either Waterfront or Warren Ponds either. So I think it's a draw. Fair enough. Um, so as I mentioned before, the freelancing hub was set up um, four and a half years ago. And the whole idea was to bring really diverse teams together. So you could be a health science student, or a psychology student working with an engineering or an IT student, also with a business marketing comm student, creative arts student on the, on the one project. And um, a couple of the ideas about behind the freelancing hub being set up was really for students to be able to demonstrate that their skills are transferable and to use them in a different context. So I mentioned before that we're working on a, on a project with um, Victoria Police next trimester. So we'll have about eight or 10 students. We'll definitely have a few health students there and they've got a really important role to play there's a diversity and inclusion angle in that project a bit of a health promotion um, angle in that project and possibly a lot of health students have never thought about working in an organization like big, big pole and seeing an organization like that so one they'll get exposure to an organization they wouldn't normally have got exposed to work with a big group of students and that diversity and that really is modern work um, the other thing we do in the freelancing hub, which touches on um, some of what Ava and Michaela said before, is the way that um, the projects are running and the way that some of our classes are running is that real hybrid mode. And one of the benefits, if there's been a benefit of COVID, is the way the world of work is moving is more and more hybrid, where you might be working remotely part of the time and in the office the other time. That's exactly how the freelancing hub projects are set up. So we've got two co-working spaces, one at the Warren Ponds campus, another at the Burwood campus. And those spaces are also set up digitally. So those that are warnable or those on the cloud can join the projects and work at the same time as everyone else. So it's a fantastic experience. Students just, just love it. And then they, they finish with a, a final presentation. So we've just finished our trimester one projects last week and the students were just um, yeah, I had a fabulous time presenting to their clients and the university. Great, thanks, Jamie. So I've got a couple of questions here that I'm just going to blend into one. Um, would you be able to explain the best way to become a mental health nurse? And what's the best way to become a speech pathologist? So these are some really good questions. Um, and it just as uh, a point of a, to help me remind you that one degree leads on to many different opportunities later on. So we talk about sort of an undergraduate degree, a bachelor's degree, and then you can specialize in either a postgraduate qualification or then through your workplace and become um, sort of a specialist in that area through your workplace. So Deacon doesn't have speech pathology per se. We have a number of speech pathologists working in our OT and our disability inclusion streams, but we don't offer speech pathology. A number of our students from either occupational therapy or health sciences go on to postgraduate speech pathology training at other universities, so that we do offer the appropriate pathway to lead into that at other universities. In terms of mental health nurse, um, your undergraduate nursing degree provides you with entry into the nursing profession, of course, and we have opportunities at postgraduate and mental health nursing, but you can also specialise once you're in the workforce around mental health nursing and pick up uh, training after after uh, you have qualified uh, with your bachelor's degree. So one, one degree 
um, is a starting point. It's a wonderful starting point and you can go on into areas that you really want to specialise in once you've finished with that uh, qualification and you're in the workplace. Okay, uh, what it's like starting working in the health industry. Are there going to be more jobs in health in the next few years? Fortunately for us, yes, health can't be automated particularly quickly. Uh, we obviously have wonderful advances in medical sciences through the use of robotics and the use of all of the medical technology, but the human need in healthcare is not ever going to go away. So we do know that this is a growth area in terms of job needs in the future. And we can also see that over the last two years where our learning opportunities were protected by the Victorian and federal governments uh, to ensure that we did have the graduates we needed to make sure that we can meet the workforce demands. So um, I'm not sure if, if perhaps Makeda, if you're in your fourth year, how are you feeling stepping into uh, being a graduate? Do you feel like you're, well, you're only in your first trimester of fourth year, so you've got a little bit of time to go, but how prepared do you feel? Um, well, like I said, I'm on a nine week placement at the moment. I'm actually going into my last week. So the big plus is that this placement has taught me, yes, I've been prepared with the right skills. Yes, I know what I'm doing. I've learnt the relevant theory and I think I am ready to go. The big scary part is it's shown how chaotic health services are at the moment mm -hmm. and how under stress they are. Mm -hmm. But I guess that also then puts in perspective how much we can do and how much of an impact we can have in that public health field. Um, I often talk to some of the um, people earlier on in the course, like the first years and second years, and they're like, when does it start to make sense? Because a lot of your course, while you are getting to go out on placement, it is a lot of theory. It's learning a lot of models. It's learning a lot of different approaches. And I can confidently say it will just click for you one day and you'll be like, yep, I'm in the right field. I know what I'm doing and you can trust your ability and know that Deacon has prepared you perfectly. Great, thank you, Michaela. And just, just out of interest, we know that there's such a growth in demand in some of our health areas that we are starting to bring more of our health courses down onto the Warrnambool campus as well. We're looking in the next year to bring social work to the Warrnambool campus and also occupational therapy in a couple of years' time. So that just speaks to the growth because we can't continue necessarily to grow them on the home campus at the moment because we don't have enough placement providers in the in the surrounding area so we need to go further afield to make sure we can we can provide people with the, the, with the right opportunities for placements. So we've only got two minutes left um, I'll just uh, so we will have to wrap up but there's one question here I think um, I might throw over to to you Shufen. there's a question here about international opportunities that are available in health degrees would you be able to provide a bit of an answer for that one? Yeah, sure. That's a wonderful question. We do have a lot of opportunities for students to go overseas. So I mentioned before about the international internship um, that, you know, it was um, online during COVID and we are looking at um, possibly opening up to students um, and where students will be able to work with um, students from all over the world in some of the local health projects. Um, other opp opportunities, including exchange programs. So Deegan has um, exchange partnership with many overseas institutes and we also have the short-term study program which actually um, just study in a couple of uh, weeks time some of our students will be going overseas and we also have in uh, international study tours so this year we will have a tour um, of nursing students that they will be going to Thailand in December and we also have another study group um, that will be going over to Malaysia and Singapore for the nutrition students. Great, thank you. And it's wonderful to have all of those opportunities back now that our borders are open again. Um, we are at 10 o'clock and I do uh, realise that you all may have um, other uh, live sessions that you want to go to for our virtual open day. So we are going to wrap up. Uh, thank you all very much for coming along on uh, this um, live Q&A session on health degrees. It's really great to see that you're interested. I hope to see you when you come on to Deakin campuses. Please don't forget there are some questions about facilities, so come along to our campus tours. Uh, we've got some really great tours that are underway and you can come and have a look for yourself. 
Um, so if we've not responded to your question, again, please join our all day web chat at the bottom right of your screen and our expert staff are there ready to answer your questions. And if you'd like to learn more, you'll find loads of really useful resources on our Deakin Open Day website that we encourage you to explore. It's there um, for as long as you need it to be. So please go back and have a look at any information there. I want to thank my panel members very much. Ava, Michaela, thank you. Really appreciate your time. And Jamie and Chufin as well. Thank you so much for coming along this morning. So thank you all for your time and we hope to see you at Deacon soon. Thank you.